Hello, today I'm going to talk about the game Ogre Deluxe Edition from Steve Jackson Games in 1987. There's other editions of Ogre. It's been around a while and it still is around. Uh, for instance, the Pocket Edition, which I happen to have. Um, I'm doing this one because I particularly like um, you know the map and components and everything. And it's from the you know 80s, so kind of fits into the genre. And there's a whole community of ogre. There's you know several editions, even up to the current day. Like I said, uh, there's volumes on strategy. Uh, and the purpose of this isn't to talk in detail about strategy. Uh, it's just to kind of give you a, a sense of how to play and kind of things to appreciate about it. Um, so if you want to be notified, just you know, feel free to subscribe. So as far as Ogre Deluxe Edition, it's you know, kind of basic art, but at least it gives you. I mean, it's colorful and looks good on a shelf, and it's kind of a bookshelf, you know, kind of game. So pretty big box. You know, eleven and a half by a nine and a half or so. It's colorful, nice. The classic game of battle against a merciless robot foe. Back of the box gives you a little bit of theme. Program to destroy. The command post is well guarded. Tanks, hovercraft, missile cannon, and infantry in battle suits. All with one job, to defend that vital base. Your mission is to go in and destroy it, alone. But when those defenders see you, they'll wish they were somewhere else. Because you're not a man, you're a thinking machine, the deadliest device on any battlefield. You're the ogre. So, it's a two-player game, but it can be done in solitaire as well. So, the box is well done. So as far as components, uh, I mean, I'm kind of a completist, I guess you'd say. Um, so, unfortunately, in this game, it didn't come with the rules, but my understanding in talking to the board game geek community, that basically the the pocket edition rules are, are functionally the same. They're formatted a little bit different, of course, you know, smaller size, etc. But they're, you know, functionally the same, so I'll be going by those. And then as far as other components, there's counters with stands. And I found it's useful to do some, um, you know, kind of a counter management box. You can have these loosener boxes, fine. But then there's these little kind of marker things, which is good to have a little thing to have them in. So a good mix of counters. Um, we'll talk about those in more detail. There's not as many stands as there are counters, but there's enough stands to get you through all the variations you'll do in the play. So, and you just, you know, replace things in stands when you want to. So, I think it's, you know, for the day it's pretty well done. And again, these little markers for indicating the levels of d different things in your damage, etc. Comes, you know, with the dice, and it's kind of an interesting dice, not to get too hung up on it, but I'm not quite sure what kind of plastic that is. It's kind of a, a, kind of soft, I guess i say. It almost gives me the impression of what a current, like, rapidly prototype dice would look like, of course, but um, that didn't exist in the day, so... So I showed there's several counters that come with it, but I'll focus on the unique types. So there's the ogres. There's a Mark V, just shown here on a stand. 
Mark III. In the front and back, so these are basically the same. There's a howitzer for the you know non-ogre troops. I guess they kind of frame this as ogre being the good guy, but it depends on your frame of reference. Uh, heavy tank, missile tank. This is the the command post. A GEV. And as far as infantry, there's uh, these are how many infantry are basically you know, how big the squad is, and this is three infantry, two infantry, and then uh, one infantry. So they're the unique units. As I said, I mean, there's a lot. There's plenty of units here, so. Then as far as the map, one thing I really like about this version of it, and admittedly I'm not very familiar with the other versions. I This actually uh, isn't one I did back, you know, decades ago, but, um, so I, I mean, every version has its pluses, but, you know, one thing I like about games is when they have a hard, you know, hard board and then they have all the information you need on the board and this accomplishes both those criteria, which is great. And this is the same map that you would get in the pocket over, the same color and everything, except of course the size is much bigger since the pieces are bigger, so it's very functional and good. So the playing area itself, these are craters, these are a rubble, and these are clear spaces, and everything beyond here and back is called the obstructed area, and this is a you know non-obstructed area. So basically the nothing can move, you know, through a crater or into a crater. The certain units can move through rubble, that being only the ogre and infantry can move through the rubble. So. And, uh, okay. And then up here, so this is where they track information. So, heavy tank, missile tank, GV, howitzer, infantry, you know, for instance, infantry. So there's an attack, a range, a defense, a movement, which I'll discuss in the rules for each of these. And then the number of units dictates, you know, this isn't like, this This is actually the number of units. So. Combat results table by going with the, basically going on the attack and defense, you know, ratios, etc. Then the ogre, also in other versions, like pocket edition, for instance, you have to kind of maintain a sheet and then check off values of things. But this is you can all do it on here, and so you use these little you call them, but to mark your know, levels. So we're here. Um, this goes in multiples 20, so like a Mark V would have, and it, so it shows the yellow are the Mark V and the green are the Mark III. So the Mark V has 30 tread, it has a 60 treads, so, um, so you go down 23 times. Each time you go down 20, you lose one movement, so three, if you're at 3 and 20, you're at full, if that makes sense. Um, in the Mark V, the missiles, are you have six in the mark three of two and there's a typo on here um, which you know it's it's not good in their typos but it's not necessarily the end of the world um, the the defense for the main attack batteries and the secondaries is not what it should be basically the defense for the main batteries is four and the defense for the secondaries is two 
is a, I'm sorry, three instead of two, but it's easy to fix it kind of mentally is a, I mean the four is for attack, just view that four as applying to attack and defense and just ignore that. And view that attack three as applying to the defense of all or the two. That way it won't hopefully bother you too much. And then, uh, so secondaries, there's six secondaries, four for Mark V, four for Mark III, anti-personnel weapons, there's 12 for Mark V, and eight for Mark III. And again, you just, you know, as they reduce your market with that. So that's the components. Again, reiterating, these aren't the the initial the rules that came with the deluxe edition, but these are functionally equivalent, and these came with the earlier version, um, the pocket edition. And good thing about Ogre, it hasn't really changed much over the time. And again, this is the content of the rules is, but not the format, but the content is consistent with the deluxe edition. So. Uh, some theme here. Again, an ogre against everybody else. So they have different scenarios. Um, so it's a two-player game with the, the units fighting against the ogre. And the the non-ogre units are defending their base and somehow the ogre is the good guy by trying to de destroy their base. Um, so so the, basics, uh, the basic scenario you get 20 points of attack strength where that is equivalent to the number of infantry units so you know um, basically you know, five units of you know three infantry um, and then the others of you know ones and twos etc to get that 20 points and then you can uh, have 12 armor units but each howitzer counts for two so and you set up the units in the obstructed area which is everything from you know here back And also you set up the command post. And you have to set up all but 20 of the attack points on or between the line drawn between the two crater hexes and the map edges. So basically the units would be between starting here and in this area right here. So all but 20 go in that area. Um, then the, the ogre enters you know, over in this on that edge. So the mark three and you go with, so it's victory if all defending units are destroyed, complete ogre victory. <clears throat> if the command post is destroyed and the ogre escapes, it's an ogre victory. If the command post and ogre is destroyed, it's a marginal victory. If it's not destroyed, but ogre escapes, marginal defense victory. If command post play ogre destroyed, defense victory. Command post and all at least 30 attack points of defense survive complete defense victory. And then the advanced scenario, same except the defense gets 30 points and 20 armor units. Uh, Howard's there's count double, and all but 40 are between the, uh, in the areas I previously described. And a Mark V ogre instead of a Mark III. And the, the defender must destroy the ogre while preserving his command post and at least 50 attack points. So. And then it gives rules for solo play. Uh, plays very well solo. Um, so you basically play both sides as you'd expect. Can various, you know, play various strategies, drive out, play balance, 
business event scenarios. Um, you know, either either side can win. It depends how skillful the player is. Ogre is a little bit easier to learn than using the other side. As far as you know, just picking up how to learn it. Then the map sheet discussed. Um, assume the top and bottom sides of the map bottom by swamp and impassable and the bottom is a river only ogres may enter so so the top is here sides are here and bottom is here Talked about the counters, different tanks. And there, so the, so again, their different abilities. Heavy tank has an attack of four, range of two. Defense three, movement three. Missile tank, attack three, range four. Defense two, movement two. GEV attack two, range two. Defense two, movement four, three. And that's got some unique movement. Howitzer is stationary, but it's got attack six, range eight, defense one. And the infantry, when you get the full th three units, you have an attack of three, defense three. Um, the range is always one, movement of two for all. When you get down to one, it's like attack and defense of one. So. We talked about the ogre already. Um, so the movement points dictates how many hexes you can go, and like I said, in many cases the rubble, except for infantry, is impassable. And the crater is always impassable. Unit, you can't stack units, so they have to be in separate hexes. Exception being you know, infantry, so instead of you know, a, a three, you know, indicate so. Uh, you know, two infantry, so. But that's not really stacking, that's a, that unique squad. So. <clears throat> Any front of the unit can move through a hex of a front of the unit, as long as they're done the same. And so an ogre may also damage or destroy the enemy army units by ramming. And you do that by ma moving on onto or through the hex. So if you ram units, any armor unit rammed is disabled on a die roll of one to three. So in that case, it wouldn't be. Well, sorry, it's uh, any armor unit is rammed, rammed is disabled on a die roll of one to three and destroyed on a die roll four to six. If the armor unit is only disabled, the ogre may spend one more movement point, stand the hex and ram again. But the thing is, uh, an ogre loses two tread units for ramming heavy tank and one per ramming any other. So it, it loses, it loses its treads. I'm sorry, its treads when it rams. So, so still movement left in the ogre after ramming. It may continue to move. Um, and but. When you when you lose tread, you start losing movement. So if you if you lose your first twenty tread, then for Mark Five, you'd go down from a three to a two. So anytime you go through this th cycle of threads once, you lose a movement point. Ogre may ram a command post, destroying it. Um, since it doesn't have any defense. Uh, so if there's several ogres, um, you know, there are scenarios where there are they may ram, and then you end your movement, and then for if a ogre rams a large one, this is five. If it's smaller, um, this is three. Or smaller or the same, this is three. The damage um, to the ram. 
So the ram dogger is from a day roll. Well, two days. Um, if the ram yogur is a three, four days, if the ram yogur is a mark five, total is the number of treads lost by the yogur that is rammed. Hmm. And that's just specific um, for the pocket edition. A little further about ramming. An ogre may ram no more than twice per turn, or one enemy ogre per turn. Army units ramming ogres, an army unit may ram an ogre by moving into its hex. The ogre loses one tread unit automatically, but the army unit is destroyed. So the armor can run into them as well, but then, you know, they're destroyed. Uh, Army units ram each other, so that's not permitted over. Infantry overruns, uh, ogre may not ram infantry, but it may move onto an infantry, so it's not there. If there is anti personnel weapons, the infantry unit is automatically reduced by one strength point. And the ogre may choose to expend another movement point, stay in the same hex, and reduce the infantry again. So that's interesting. So and then there's G. So like I said, there's uh, the GV has unique movement, and that may move twice per turn. Everything else just moves once. Um, so it may move up to four. You know, before combat. Uh, when all moves, and up to three after combat. So that's the advantage of a GV. You can move twice. Once four and one three. And the order begins with three and then it's reduced as it loses tread. So the way combat works, so it occurs after you move and then you do your combat. The combat factors, you sum you can combine attacks, so you, um, you can, which would be summing the attack values, and uh, the defense strength is the, you know, the defense value. And the ogre has unique, like I said, each of its units has a unique attack and defense. So the the way it works is basically the um, attacking units sum their attack, and they tell which aspect of the ogre they're attacking, and then they'll compare their attack to the defense of that specific aspect of the ogre. And then you do the combat results table, where a you, know, you roll a six, you know, they're unique six-sided dice. Um, if it's any it means no effect. So, for instance, if the ratio is one to one, say there's an attack of value of four and a defense value of four. Say, for instance, um, on a mark fives. Um, Mark V's main batteries, um, defense is four, so, and say if you have, you know, four infantry units combining fire, that would give them an attack of four, so the results would be one to one. Any means no effect. The, the unit you're attacking is a damage. D has different meanings, so, if it's uh, so, uh, if it if it, an ogre is attacked, it's undamaged. If an infantry is attacked, its strength is reduced by one. And then X's. So a an army unit is disabled. You can either move or fire next turn. A disabled armor unit is destroyed if it, if it receives a D while disabled. 
If number receives an X, it's destroyed. If part of an ogre receives an X, it's destroyed. It should immediately be marked off the ogre record. If the defender is any other unit, is eliminated or removed from the map. So X means you basically take off the amount of damage or uh, take off the unit. So then that's, that's how all that works. Um, you can't attack multiple targets. And, and then also for the units, they have a defense value, and then they also have the attack value. So they use that attack when you do that. And the ogre fires all its items that it has available during a turn. It can only fire a missile once for each number it has. And each time you fire a missile, it's marked off, so you only have that remaining the missiles. All the others you just can keep you fire can each, each turn. And the personnel weapons are only effective against infantry in the command post. Missiles are used only once. Um, any firing on an ogre must specify the target aspect of the ogre's attacking. Uh, so if you attack, or I mean, the attack on weapons is pretty uh, self-explanatory. Like I said, attack on treads. If they're the, if the tread units are attacked, the attack is always one to one. And if it's successful, if it, you get an X on the CRT, the ogre loses the number of tread units equal to the attack strength used. So if you had an attack strength of two, for instance, it'd lose two treads. Timing each player must make his text in any order. But you have to observe the effects of the attack before announcing and carrying out the next. Or is not destroyed until all its weapons and trinities are gone. If there's a immobile ogre, it, the game is ended at that point. If an ogre ends its movement in the same X as an unit, it's viewed as, as if they're adjacent. So any of the game, regular games, as the attacking forces and straight withdraws, time limit games can play till one force is eliminated. Um, if you don't play through eliminated, you must decide for a specific number of turns. And there's optional rules. There's optional rules. Uh, you can have a command trailer that actually has a movement of one instead of being stationary. You have mines, and you you know, write down a scratch pad where they are. And if the ogre enters it, um, they might explode five or six, and then. You'd either roll for the number of tread units or roll of six for any other unit would indicate um, that aspect is destroyed. Camouflage, if I remember me, uh, yeah, it's a camouflage. The attacker may detect the presence of a unit, but not its nature. And these put like a mark like coins to represent where they are, but you don't know what they are until they get there. Destruct. Ogre may self-destruct. Um, that means all non-ogre units with 4x are destroyed. All units with 5x are disabled. Ogre in the same hex is destroyed. Ogre and other hexes are unaffected. Not hardened CP. Um, can I find a defense strength of one or two? Uh, so a D, if it was a mobile one, it would cause it to be a mobile, but no other effect. Other scenarios, I'm uh, seeing use different possible battles. Can work out different victory levels. For instance, Mark three. Um, as far as setup, if you work out maybe a, you can do a defending player, um, 
takes Mark III and 12 armor units and infantry and the attacker is a Mark V. So you have like a Mark V going against a Mark III and some other defensive. Mark III, use two Mark III's instead of Mark V in the advance. Reverse the rolls and have the attacker go against the ogre. And uh, and they try to do destroy the command post. Duel. Just uh, simply combat between a couple orders. Improvisation. Each card may provide in various situations above. You have whole new battles. Um, and just unique scenarios. So. So then I'll uh, show an example of the setup and play. Okay, I'll show a setup here. And I'm going to do the basic scenario, which involves a Ogre Mark III. So I, there's a lot of you know literature out there. Um, and on the Steve Jack Games website, actually, they have some good examples of a defensive setup. And then I, so I used you know, one of their examples for a kind of a quick start guide they had. So first of all, for the Mark III, its stats are it has, so again, these little counters, you know, cover up the where you're at. So there, the Mark III has two missiles indicated there, has a uh, you know, one main battery. It's got four secondary batteries. And it's got eight anti-personnel. And then, of course, if I was doing Mark V, I'd be maxing those out. For movement, it has 45 tread units. So it's got three when it's got full 45. Then when it drops down to 30, it goes to two to one, etc. So, you know, it's basically, you were shown 15 times three, there's 45 threads. So that's a set for the Mark III, and uh, and of course here's the stats for the different the different tanks, etc., and infantry. So for setup in the the basic scenario, first of all, all the if you look at the line between these two hexes where the these craters are on the edge of the board. Only all but twenty of of the attack strength points must be at or behind this line. So we're allowed twenty basically to go up go up here. Um, set the command unit back here I want that as far north as possible and like I said you use an example just kind of putting that in a corner there and then defenders allowed 20 points of attack strength for infantry so basically um, 20 numbers of total units so we got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18 and then 20 and then you're allowed 12 arm units and a howitzer counts as two so two for the howitzer so it's two and then three four five six kind of adding the GEVs And then seven, eight, nine, adding the missile tanks, ten, eleven, twelve, adding the heavy tanks for your total of twelve. Such so a setup, as long as you follow those rules, all but twenty behind this line, um, you know. 12 total armor units and 20 points of infantry. You can do anything that fits in that. And I use this for an example. 
And then the Mark three three I have coming here in just the center of the board. It'll be entering on the cell side. So that's the setup. Okay, I've gone a few turns here and let's I'll show you where I'm at, talk about um, what's been going on. So I'm not advocating any particular strategy or anything. I'm just trying some different approaches and just see what happens. So basically I'm having the ogre kind of move, you know, rapidly up here. Um, and then he'll kind of go, go in here. And so I sent an initial force of heavy tanks and missile tanks to meet the ogre and uh, to kind of reduce him before he got to this other force and this force will kind of be you know guarding the uh, the command post anyway that was my idea so there's been damage on both sides so the ogre took out a couple of missile tanks and three heavy tanks and he took out a couple of the heavy tanks by ramming them and when he rammed them he damaged his treads so he lost four treads from two rammings he also launched a missile and then um, you know disabled and then ended up uh, destroying with main batteries a, uh, a heavy tank so he only has one missile left um, and then before he lost his main batteries, he was able to uh, use them to take out, you know, the missile tanks. And he's, other than, you know, he lost some treads, he's, like I said, he launched one missile, he just has one left. And the missile tanks were successful in destroying his, he only had one main battery, and now he lost that so he doesn't have any left. Since he's a Mark III, he only, only had one. And they also, they are able to destroy, a heavy tank was able to destroy um, one of his secondaries, so that's been marked down. And then also I believe a missile tank uh, was able to destroy one of his anti-personnel. So that's kind of where we're at right now. So now we'll go in the sequence. So the ogre moves, and he'll just be coming, coming in quickly here. And the ogre fires, and uh, he's going to save his missile. He's not going to be using that. Well, actually, he'll use his missile because you know he doesn't want it to be destroyed. So he'll go ahead and use that on the the GEV. So it's a. Like I said before there's a misprint in here where the. Um, You know, it's wrong here, but um, the actual main battery and secondary battery are fours and and threes. But it's okay. So he's got he's going to do his secondary battery at the GEV, which the attack is three. So he's firing a secondary. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. He's firing his missile at the GV. Its attack is six. The GV's defense is two, so it's a, a three to one. Five. And he destroys it. But he has no more missiles. So. And then his secondaries have a range of two, so there's nothing around there and there's um, there's no infantry around there either. So and then the next would be for if the defender had units that were disabled he, from the previous turn, he could recover them, but he doesn't have any that are disabled. So and now the defender moves, and I'll just be moving a. Infantry with a you know missile tank and kind of group them together. So and so his range is four. So the 
that would get him in range. I'll just move all these. And these can move twice. Actually, I'll just so he'll be in range. These others will just stay in position. So the the missile tank um, let's see, he'll fire at the anti-personnel. It's got a defensive one, so it's a three to one. So unfortunately, he doesn't do any damage. The GEV attack is two, two to one. So he's able to knock down one personnel. And then the next turn. So he wants to keep moving in. I'm not how sure how wise his strategy is, but we'll just see what happens. And he'll he wants to get to the infantry so he can start using his uh, anti-personnel and he'll go against a missile tank with his secondaries it's a uh, three uh, three to two so uh, it'd be 1.5 but to be favorable to the offensive two and no effect so I wasn't very successful and now the defenders are going to go, and so the, let's see what's in range, the GV, he can move in, then he can move out, so he'll move, he moves, so he's in range. The missile tank has a further range, so he'll back up a little bit. And the infantry will go in there, and then the rest will stay the same. We'll see what happens here. So the infantry is going to go at the treads of the ogre, and that's a one to one. Five. So he takes out a tread. The GEV then is going to attack, and it would be a two. He's going to the secondaries, two to three, so um, 0.7, or, you know, 0.66, but we'll run it to one. Two, no effect. The missile tank is within four, so he can attack, and it's three to three, so it's, you know, one to one, six, and he took out a secondary, so it's successful. So that's just a couple turns to kind of show how it plays out. So the status then is you know, there's all the person, the infantry left. There's a howitzer, some missile tanks, GVs left. Um, but the ogre is down to having just two secondaries, six anti-personnel. He still has a lot of treads. He, so that's the situation. 
Slice Ogre Deluxe Edition from Steve Jackson Games from 1987. The classic game of battle against a merciless robot foe. It's a very enjoyable game. There's a lot of variation. Obviously the components look really nice. They're not uh, miniatures, but you got these things on stands, which works fine. The graphics look great. I'm glad that you can track everything on the board, and then that kind of makes it unique from the other Ogre games, in that in those you need like sheets to you know mark off, etc. But here it's all on the board in the Ogre Deluxe still Edition, which I like it. It's limited in the fact that it only has this terrain. There are other more recent Ogre options that have you know different terrain, but this has the same terrain as the Pocket Edition, um, but. There's enough variability here with everything, so it goes really well. So I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Thanks a lot.